Hi, I'm Laura Nelkin. I'm a knitwear designer. I live in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. And this video is to introduce you to something that I am very excited about, and that is embroidery on knitting. I've been doing embroidery on different pieces of fabric and knitting since I was in my 20s, but I've never done a design where I incorporated embroidery into my knitting. And you know that I had to take it one step further and figure out how to also incorporate beads into my embroidery. So this video is going to be a small dive into a few ways that you can work with embroidery on your knitting and add beads to it. I think that you'll find that this video is going to be a great jumping point for you and your own creativity. And I'm really excited to see what you all end up stitching on your Duolola's as you get into this. So the first thing that I want to do before we get into the stitches is go over materials that I think that you'll need to have success. If you are in my November Lola's Choice Club, you got a kit called Do a Lola, and that has all the ingredients or materials that you need to have success doing embroidery with beads on your knitting. One of the things I love about my clubs is they allow me to kind of do a dive into a new technique. It gives me kind of the space and the financial freedom to be able to do that. So I really appreciate your support when you sign up for clubs because it lets me as a creative kind of follow some paths and find some new things and get kind of turned on and get my creative juices flowing. So thank you again for that. Without further ado, let me show you the materials that you'll need for embroidering on your knits. All right, if you look under the camera with me, you will see a few things that you got in your kit that will help you embroider on your knits. The first thing that you got in your kit are two needles. They are both size 18 needles. They are great for working with kind of like a sport DK weight yarn. And you'll see that one of these needles has a really sharp tip and that's a cruel needle. And then one of the needles has a duller tip and that is a tapestry needle. You'll be using the cruel needle if you are working with the stabilizer, which we will talk about in a second. And I would use the tapestry needle if you're just sewing directly onto your knits. Then you also got a little bit of sport weight yarn. The sport weight yarn I set with the kit is a feeder brook yarn. Um, it's called Entropy Sport. I don't believe that they are milling it anymore. I had a bunch left over from a few different projects. So it was kind of like the perfect thing to use in this kit. What I would say to you for embroidering on knits is have fun, go stash diving, find some yarns that you have that look great on your knitted fabric fabric and play around with them. I just gave you some yarn to start with that I knew you'd have success with to get going. The other things in your kit, if you're going to be working with beads, are a dental floss threader, and that serves as a large eye beading needle. And then you also got some size six Matsuno seed beads. These are a Japanese seed bead. They have a square hole and a silver lining, and they just look great on lots of different colors of fabric. You could use any size six bead if you have a little bead stash at home. You could certainly go and grab another bead that you have in your stash to work with. The final thing that I want to talk about in terms of supplies is this wash away stabilizer. So I'm just going to kind of clear everything out of the way. This wash away stabilizer is called Stick and Stitch. It is made by Sulky. There are a few different manufacturers that make this wash away stabilizer. And what the wash away stabilizer does is let you kind of 
draw onto the stabilizer with a pen or trace onto it and then take the stabilizer and stick it onto your knitting and then embroider through it and then you'll be able to get it wet later and it will completely dissolve. So if you're somebody who's more comfortable kind of following a line drawing than going free form with your embroidery, I bet that this is the technique that you're going to want to use. I did in the pattern, let me see if I can find it for you. I think it's fun to show you. I did in the pattern give you a few different things that you could follow and trace. You'll just put your stabilizer over the thingy that you want to trace and then use a pen or a pencil to trace over and then cut it out and place it onto your knitting. And I think it makes sense. I'm going to go over some resources and then I'm going to show you how to do that on your knitting just to make sure that that is really clear. So let's go ahead and talk about resources. Okay, if you get deep into embroidering on knits, there are two books I'd love to highly suggest to you that you might want to add to your library. You certainly don't need these. You could Google embroider on knits and find lots of videos, including mine, obviously, and um, other resources for embroidering on your knits. But if you're someone who likes to have books the way that I like to have books, I think that you'll find this that this Embroidery Stitch Bible by Betty Barden is an excellent resource to have in your library and I would highly suggest it. The other book that I absolutely adore that's just like gorgeous if you want a book for inspiration and technique, this book that just came out by Lanya is called Embroidery on Knits. It's by Judith Gumlik. It's superb. It is just beautiful. If I show it to you kind of underneath a little bit, you'll get an idea of she, she does some embroidery with ribbon. Really, really, really pretty. And so I've gotten a lot of inspiration from this book. I actually just got it after I had already done the embroidery on my Duolola pieces. And I am so happy to have it in my library for years to come. So those are two books I would suggest in terms of if you want to take a longer form workshop or video and learn more. My friend Betts White has an embroidery on knits online workshop, and then she also teaches embroidery on knits with Vogue knitting. So you might want to take a class with her at some point. And then another friend of mine, um, Knitted Bliss JC, you can look her up on Instagram and I'll in the pattern I've given you a link to her website. She she has some patterns that she has already printed onto wash away stabilizer and she also has a video course as well about embroidering on knits so this if this is a rabbit hole that you get into for a while i just kind of wanted to give you ideas and resources to follow the techniques further Okay, so now that we have talked about resources, I think the next thing we're gonna do is do some embroidering together. So let's start with the wash away stabilizer and look at how that works. Okay, this stuff is really easy to use. You can see that I've already traced my little Lola's Choice logo onto a piece of stabilizer. And what I'm gonna do is peel it off of the backing and then choose where I want it to go on my Duolola headband and just kind of place it onto the headband, sticking it down. You'll see that I kind of trimmed around it. I could have even trimmed a little bit more, but if you give yourself some base, then as you go to stitch into it, it will really get held down, but you don't need to have that entire piece that I gave you in your kit to stitch on. You can just kind of cut off a piece. And then because I am going to be embroidering through this paper, and this paper is a little bit um, thick, use the cruel needle, not the tapestry needle. Use the needle that has the sharper tip on it for working with this. So I've got that on there, and then I'm just going to go in from the back to the front and start right there. And I'm just gonna start with the back stitch and we'll go over the back stitch in a second. But basically I'm gonna come in right here and then I'm gonna bring my needle up a stitch lengths away from that stitch. 
So I'm already kind of jumping into the back stitch with you. And this is called the back stitch because you're going from the back to the front. So that is how you work when you are embroidering onto the wash away stabilizer. And you can see for a design like this, it's really nice to have a line to follow. And it also kind of keeps your fabric from stretching too much and pulling apart. So now that we've gone over that, oh, I guess the last thing I should tell you about it is when you're done and you've done all your embroidery, then you'll just go ahead and take this and put it in some warm water, not super hot because you don't want to felt your wool. And the um, wash away stabilizer will, guess what? It'll wash away, it'll dissolve, it'll feel a little bit gummy, but then it will completely wash away and your embroidery will just be left on your knitting. So here's an example of a piece that I did on the wash away. And I was just kind of playing with color and bead techniques here. This is not how I ended up liking this. I tried it and I didn't like this yarn. It was kind of disappearing and the green wasn't showing up enough. And then I tried it again on this mitt and I used a color that really contrasted with my yarn. You can see I did the beads a little bit differently on here, but Part of how I learned how to do this is kind of playing around and trying different techniques and deciding what I liked and didn't like. One of the things that's very cool about embroidering on knits is if you don't like the way something looks, you just kind of snip it out and start again. The only thing you have to do is make sure that you don't snip your knitting while you're doing that. But I redid my knitting a few times as I was kind of getting more comfortable with stitches and deciding what I wanted the beads to do. So next thing I think, let's go over a few stitches together. Okay, so let's start with the back stitch and the split stitch, which are very similar to each other. I already briefly showed you how to start the back stitch. And what I have under my needle is a Duolola fingerless mitt that's kind of halfway done. I kind of stopped doing the embroidery right here so we could finish it together. And I am threading my yarn onto the tapestry needle, not onto the cruel needle. And then I'm gonna go in and you can see, I kind of put my left hand inside the mitt so I could kind of have a surface to come through. And then I might turn it like this to make it easier to do, even though that feels upside down and backwards right now. But I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come into this hole right here. And then I'm gonna come up a stitch length away. And the back stitch is called the back stitch again because we're going back towards where we were before. And now I'm gonna go right in here and then I'm gonna come about a stitch length away. That might be a little too far. Let's come a little bit closer. You can either split the yarns in your knitting or not. That is up to you. And now I'm gonna do that one more time. And now the difference, I'm gonna show you the split stitch next. The split spit stitch is different because instead of going into the hole where you just are were and not splitting that yarn, I'm gonna go just a little bit farther in so that I'm splitting the embroidery stitch that I just worked. And then I'm gonna come up a stitch length away. And that is why it's called the split stitch. And you can see as I do that, that it makes a little bit more of a continuous align than the back stitch does. It kind of makes a smoother line. So you might find that you like the split stitch more than the back stitch. That is up to you. And I suggest that you play with them both. Now I'm really glad I just did what I did because I took way too big a stitch right there and I'm not going to be happy with that. So what I am going to do is actually take this stitch out and I think it's cool to show you how easy that is to do if you're not happy with a stitch. So it's a really easy to kind of back up and fix something if you're not happy with it. I also think it's one of those things that you could get really finicky about. Kind of let the gods be involved a little bit here. Don't be too precise. Have fun. You're basically just like painting with your with your um thread right now, which is really, really fun. 
So I'm going to do one more stitch that's a split stitch and then I'm going to come right back up where I came out of and then the next stitch that I want to show you is what's called a long stitch and a short stitch and they're so obvious that I'm just going to kind of show it to you. A long stitch, wait for it people, is when you make a long stitch and then you come back up where you were before. So that's like a nice long stitch right there, right? What I like to do with a long stitch is put beads on it. I think it ends up doing this really kind of botanical, interesting element that I'm really drawn to. So I'm going to undo that long stitch I just did. And then I am going to show you how to get beads on here by grabbing a few of my beads. And I'm going to do a long stitch with three beads on it. So I'm just going to pour out a few beads so I have a few there. And then to do this, grab that dental floss threader, which is a large eye beading needle, put your end of yarn through there, and then pick up three beads with the dental floss threader, and then slide them onto your yarn. And then what you'll do is go ahead and take your tapestry needle, put your yarn back into your tapestry needle, and then go ahead and make that long stitch the length of the beads, right? So I, you can see I'm kind of holding the beads down right there and I'm going down and then I'm coming back up, pulling that tail through. If you don't make that stitch long enough, then your beads might start to kind of buckle up a little bit. So you'll find that you really want to lay that out. And if I'm going to do that one more time, I'm going to take the end. If I wanted to do five beads, I could do that and do a long stitch, an even longer stitch. The thing to think about is if these are beaded mitts, you don't want to make that stitch so long that it would get kind of caught on something, like have your key snag it or your ring or um, your baby's finger. I don't have a baby, but if one had a baby, right, you would worry about their finger getting caught in there. So then again, I'm just going to go ahead and make that long stitch. So you could see you could make an entire star like this. You could really go to town. I did a long stitch right up here. This one got a little bit. Let's kind of tighten that up so I can show it to you. I did a long stitch right here, kind of gathering these long and short stitches from side to side. I just kind of went for it. And I really urge you to do that to see what you'll come up with on your knitting. As I was doing this, I'm just going to show you on my practice piece what things look like as I was playing around with different stitches. These were um, some kind of botanical modern stitches I was playing with as I was thinking about what I wanted to do. This one is a back stitch right here where then I did kind of side stitches off of each side of it. And then I tried to play with doing kind of a tulip thing. I think this one I threaded on about 10 beads of another color and then I tacked them down. And I like it, but it's a little wonky, so I didn't end up wanting to go with it. But it is kind of intriguing that you could do kind of something all the way around the bottom and do kind of like a whole kind of gardenscape there. Um, this piece, I, I love how I got those beads in the round, but I didn't quite manage to do it on those. So I didn't end up kind of going in that direction. These stitches right here, I wrapped one stitch going up by just kind of stitching over and over and over and wrapping it. So it's actually quite thick on the back as well as on the front. And then this is a version of what you just saw on the mitt. The next stitch that I want to show you, which is very easy to do, is a little star stitch. And then I put a bead at the center of my star stitch. So you could kind of like pepper your duolola mitts or headband with the star stitch, and that would be really cool. So let me show you that, and then that's everything I have to teach. Okay, let's do a little star stitch together, and then we'll put a little bead in the center of it. I'm gonna start by coming from the back of my work and coming through my knitting to the front. And then what you're doing is working your spokes 
outward from the center. And I actually find it easier with a star to kind of work the four corners and then work the outside spokes. And if you want to be really kind of regular with your star, you could kind of count to get the length the same. So if I'm gonna go like one, two, three, and make that my center, and then I am going to go up three running stitches right there. So if I kind of look in between there, you can see I've got three running stitches right there going up in the rows. And now I'm going to come down right there. And then I'm going to go under one, two, three legs. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come back to the center and I'm going to come underneath one, two, three right there. You don't have to be exact like this. I think this is my mathematical mind needing to do that to have symmetry. And now we're going to do the four lines that go like that. And those I can't quite do the same count, but I can kind of look at the length there and the length there to make sure that those are matching up. And I'm going to come back to the center and then I'm going to come back to the other side over here. And I'm going to come back to the center and then I'm going to go up right here. You do not need to do it in the same order. Seriously, you get to just go for it. This is so fun. And now I'm going to come back into the center and I think I could make stars forever. Just like do something just smattered with them. And now finally, I'm going to come back into the center again so that I'm coming down like that. And then I'm going to come up kind of splitting these yarns so that I'm not coming back up exactly where I went in to the center. And then I'm going to take my yarn off of my needle for a second, put it onto the dental floss threader, grab a bead or you could grab a few beads. You could use a bigger bead here if you want. The sky is the limit. I have a feeling a lot of you have stashes of yarn and beads and you're going to be able to do some really fun things with this. And now I've got that bead on there. I'm going to put that back onto my needle and then I'm going to go down right there. And what that is doing is making a bead right at the center of my little freeform star right there. And that is so cute. That leg maybe could have been a little bit longer. I think I pulled it up tight. That was the last leg I worked. So let me just kind of pull it so that spokes a little longer really fun. Your stars should be kind of whimsical. Stars are not perfect. I think it's it's a little better if you're not trying to go for all of your legs being exactly the same length, but let it be a little bit wonky and fun. And so if you wanted to do another star in the same color, you could just kind of go along the back and come up over here and start again. Fun, right? I am really excited to see what you all come up with as you start to embroider your duololas and other knits. I hope this video becomes a great resource that you come back to again and again as you start to play with this technique on your knitting. I can see you doing a simple sweater with a little bit of embroidery on it. I can see you doing hats, your duolola headband and mitts. Please do share with me. I would love to see them especially as you start to incorporate beads. This is really fun for us to get to do together. So thank you so much and happy knitting.